test you can do in this whole class is do the open circuit voltage test on the battery. All we're going to do is turn this thing to DC volts and then check to see how many volts is available at the top of the battery. How much should it be? 12.6. Less than that, then it's not charged up all the way, is it? Okay, so I turn it to DC volts. Set it down here. This, uh, this diesel engine only has one battery. Now, the typical application on this would have dual batteries, wouldn't it? This is the training aid, but it just has one. So just go down to the battery. Test leads to the post here. And I've got 12.32 volts. So is this battery charged up? You're about 60%, 65 So it's not all the way charged up, is it? Now, will it likely start this, this train? It, it will because it's warm in here. If it was zero degrees outside, it likely wouldn't charge and start the train, right? Okay. So that's that's a simple test there. Another real simple test is to use the digital battery tester. The digital battery tester, you just hook it to the battery. Then you got to plug in how many CCAs the battery has. Tell the machine here and then hit the green button. So we'll go down here. This is a pretty good sized battery. It is a 950 CCA battery. So simply connect it to the battery top here. And then hit the up and down arrow <coughs> until you get to your rating. So I've got to go down to 950. When I'm at 950, you just hit the button, give it about 10 seconds, and it'll tell us on this readout here the state of the battery and how many cranking amps it has. So it says 12.31 uh, volts. 876 CCA good slash recharge. So this thing told me the battery needs to be charged up. So that's the good part of this, this tool here. Real simple to use. A lot of these come with a printer. Once you do a test, you send the results to the printer and attach that certificate that you printed out to the repair order showing that you did this test. Okay? So if you want to do a low test, you have to be pulling at least about 400 40 amps, half of 950, so what is half of 950? 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 50 would be half of 900, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, yes. Now, could I do a load test on this battery right now and it be a valid load test? If it's less than 75% charge, is it going to be a valid load test? No. No. Now, am I going to do that test? Yes, because I'm going to show you how to do a load test. All right? So that's how to... To check open circuit voltage, that's how to check the, uh, the electronic battery test method of testing the battery. Another test we can do, um, let's go ahead and use the amp clamp. This would be a review for you. Let's check the starter draw and the charging output using the amp clamp. So when we're using the amp clamp, where does this lead go? Does it go in the amp slot? No, it goes in the volt ohm slot, doesn't it? So you hook it into the volt ohm slot. Now, what do you turn your meter to? Millivolts. Millivolts. Why don't you turn it to amps? I'm measuring amps. It can, all these accessories on these flukes convert whatever you're trying to measure into millivolts. Now, when I see the reading up on the screen here, it's going to be in amps. Okay, but I set the, the meter to millivolts. So set it to millivolts. Then you turn the tool on. The little light comes on then you need to zero the meter. So I've got it, it's at about 11. So I just turn the dial down to where I get close to zero. Pretty close, zero. Now this, this tool here will go up to 600 amps. So it can measure up to 600 amps, AC or DC. And so it's good for checking starter draw on a big piece of equipment. It's not going to be very good for checking parasitic draw. Parasitic draw is a very small reading, which should be very minimal when everything's turned off. This tool is probably not going to be accurate enough to check that. But we can check starter draw and we can check charging output using this tool. So I'll set this down here. Basically, I need to go around all the negatives or all the positives. So the negative seems to be easier here. Let's go around those. Make sure the jaw is closed. Then I can go over here and I can either start this vehicle, this trainer, or I can check the starter draw on it. So first thing I do is to start it and let it run. And that'll be the charging output.
So that's, that's using the tool to check charging output current. All right. Now, how would I check charging output voltage? I don't need the amp clamp to do that, do I? I just hook the voltmeter at the battery and it starts the vehicle. What should it be? The charging voltage. What, what did my power player slide say? 1350. This is a rule of thumb. It should be higher than 12.6. If it's not higher than 12.6, it won't charge the battery, will it? What if it's 18? It's too high. Too high. What might that do to logic devices on my truck or on my truck? Part of so if it goes too high, that's a major problem. I only want it to go to about, some of them's even less than 15, 14.7 or so. 13 to 15 is a good generic spec. All right? So that's charging amperage, and I just told you how to check charging voltage. Now let's check starter drop using this amp clamp. So I'll leave it connected the same way, but I need to make this thing crank but not start. So what can I do on a vehicle to make it crank not start? Take out a relay. Take a major relay, like a fuel control relay. If, if, it's, if it's an electronic engine, I can unhook the crank sensor, the cam sensor. I can take an ECM fuse out. I can take the fuel pump relay out. What that's going to do is let it start, run, and run out of fuel, and then it won't, won't start any more on this computer. This. Okay, what should happen now is it's going to crank and not start, but what I'm interested in seeing is the, the reading on that meter there. It's going to be two, three, four, or five hundred amps depending on your application. This will probably be four or five. This is the diesel. Okay? So I'm going to crank it for about 10 seconds. Y'all watch that and tell me how much it is. Okay? Here we go. How much was it when it was? About four, six. Four to five hundred? Okay, so why is it so high? The bigger starter. The bigger starter, and I've got a uh, compression ignition vehicle here with high compression ratio. How much would it be on a, on a car? A lot less than that because it doesn't have pistons this big and it doesn't have to raise the compression really high to, to ignite the fuel. So a, lot, a light duty vehicle, a gasoline engine, will be a lot less. As a rule of thumb, the cranking amperage for a, for a car, Gasoline car should be about 100 to 150 amps. A V6 vehicle should be about uh, 125 to 175 amps. And a V8 gasoline should be anywhere from 140 to 200 amps. Does that kind of vary versus a car and a truck? So you got 2,500 heavy-duty trucks. If it's diesel, it definitely will vary. Yes. But if it's gas, a V8 you know, heavy truck versus a a V8 car shouldn't be a lot. I mean, if it's a larger, you know, block, it may be a little higher. Yeah, I mean, if it's bigger, if it's a, you know, 400 cubic inch versus a uh, 205 cubic inch. Okay? All right. So that's how to use this to check starter draw and check charging output. Okay? When you're doing that with a, a gas engine and stuff, would it be safe? Uh, you know how you're talking about pulling the fuses? stuff to make it not start. Would it be safe to pull a couple of plug wires off? Go okay, ahead. good good question. The question is can we pull the plug wires off or do something to the ignition system to make it not start? And the answer is yes. However, if it's still fueling, then it we're going to wash our cylinders down. It may cause a no start. Especially on a late model vehicle that has platinum plugs. A lot of times if they get flooded, if the cylinders get wet, they won't clean themselves up until we take those plugs out and clean them out. So it's not as good a way to do that uh, by unhooking the ignition system because of that reason. We could make it crank and not start, but it may not ever start until we wash them, until we clean the plugs. Yeah, ain't there a good chance to just completely foul out the plug also because of the gas engine? Sure, I mean, it won't start. That's what happens to these little training units that I have. If I get them flooded, they won't start until I take the plugs out and dry them off and kind of let the cylinders dry out a little bit. Okay? Good question. Any other questions?